Trying to understand life as a medical student can be quite difficult, which is why in this video I've decided to interview four other medical students and have an open and honest discussion about what life really is like at medical school. Okay, so uh, starting off, uh, can you say your name, your year and your background please? Uh, my name's Amy, I'm a third year medic and I'm from East London. I'm Harriet, I'm in my fourth year at Leeds, so I've done three years of medicine and then I'm integrating in clinical anatomy at the moment and I'm from Thamesditton in Surrey. My name's Rishabh Suwarna, I'm a first year international med student and I was born in India but I was brought up in Malaysia. My name is Shavad Akaya, I'm a third year medical student at the University of Leeds and I'm from Turkey, I'm an international student. In one word, how would you describe life in medical school? Chaos. Chaotic. Varied. If I were to describe it in one word, I'd probably say it's uh, unique because we get to study so many different things and we get to build so many different skills, not just clinical skills, but like the soft skills as well, which I appreciate. Oh, quite varied. It's just, it, I think, there's a lot of diversity in terms of what you're doing, uh, difficulty levels of what you're doing, because some of it's really easy, some of it's very hard. Um, the people you meet are varied, everything. I don't think there's like one universal experience where it's so diff it's also diverse and stuff like that. Before we talk about life at medical school, let's talk about getting there in the first place because it is a really difficult thing to do. You have to do well in aptitude tests, you have to do well at interviews, and if you get an offer, you have to make sure you get straight A's across the board in your A-levels or equivalent. The steps are relatively simple to recall, but one person's journey into medical school will differ heavily from another person's. So I'm now going to ask these four medical students about how they got into medical school in the first place. How difficult was it to get into medical school? Like the interview process, applications, exams. How was it for you? Do you want to hear the whole story? I want to hear everything. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I was quite lucky to go to a school that was really supportive, so they gave me a fair bit of help. But even when you do have that support, it is quite, it is quite a tough journey to get through. For me, not, I, I, I don't know, because I, I come from a very privileged background. You know, I came from a school that supported me lots. My parents supported me. Um, I didn't find the interviews hard. It was more like the aptitude tests. Um, and sick form in general, I hated my sick form. So like try, <laughs> trying to get through that was more the difficult part. So um, in Turkey, I was in an American high school, half American, half Turkish. The teachers were uh, all American, we were Turkish. Um, so we were studying for the American exams, SATs, SAT subjects. Um, but we also did APs, advanced placements, um, which is kind of equivalent to A-levels in the UK, I think. Yeah, UK schools accept that. Um, anyway, I did all of those, um, but I wanted to go to US at the time. But the thing is, you can't study medicine in the US, like just stay after high school. You need to do a four-year pre-med program and then apply, um, which is even harder to get into because like then the acceptance ratio is down to like 1%, less than 1% for international students. Uh, so I was like, well, that's not happening, but I want to do medicine, so what do I do now? So initially, at first, I was quite uncertain as to what I wanted to do, and I made my decision to study medicine quite late, like towards kind of the end of year 12, because it was either between this research or engineering, because um, I'm quite a mathsy person, like I quite enjoy my maths and physics, but I also enjoy my sciences too. So. It was a conflict between choosing these things. Ultimately, I ended up going for medicine because um, my passion was in helping people. I really enjoyed all the community service that I was doing at my school. And this in combination with my passion for the sciences is what, is what drove me to pursue medicine. So last year in my high school, I studied hard for the university exam in Turkey. A real, real grinding. Um, then pandemic happened, we were stuck in the house. So I studied, studied, studied. I think as well with medicine, on your personal statement, you're expected to do so much. And um, 
you know, so you're meant to be doing like sports or be prefect or whatever. And I think trying to juggle that with some A-levels, which are quite difficult. The, the personal statement, um, what I kind of did for that was I ended up doing quite a lot of um, lab work. I went to like a hospital for a bit, an oncology clinic to do a bit of work experience. That was nice in helping me get something written up for the personal statement. As for the, um, the tests that I did, the UCAT and the BMAT, they went all right. I, I, in retrospect, I feel like I could have prepared for it a little bit more, that I could have taken out a bit more time for it. But the interviews I found fine. Um, I, th I think in the end I got three interview offers and then three offers from that. I think entrance exams are tough, but once you sort of got through the entrance exams, at least from my point of view, the interviews are a bit of a piece of piss. How would you describe the entrance exams? You, you said you found them difficult. Oh my gosh. Go I, I, I hate them, okay? BMAT was better than UKCAT, but for me, I think with the UKAT, I just didn't see how, if you got a great score in UKAT, how that would equate at all to how you'd be as a doctor. So I think in my mind, I was just like, these are completely pointless. Um, and of course, when you go in to UKCAT, you're doing it in the same place that people who do their driver's theory test do it. And you go in, and I think at the time, I was just thinking, oh my gosh, my entire career just rests on this like two hours. And I hated it. And I also think the UKCAT, um, it's a lot, maybe I'm just salty because I didn't get a very good score. <laughs> but then, uh, by June, it was the university exam in Turkey, and three days before the exam, um, I got an email from University of Leeds saying they were still interested in, and wanted to have an interview with me. But it was three days before the university exam in Turkey, so I was like, okay, I'm just going to ignore that because I need to keep my keep myself focused on this exam. This is my future. But I think the UK CAT is largely dependent on the resources you find to, to revise. Um, and I think if you invest a bit of money into it, then you're going to do better than people who haven't. Um, B, BMAT, because uh, Cambridge, you could just use their sort of BMAT textbook. I think it was a bit more free for all. I prefer BMAT a lot more. Um, but the aptitude tests were horrible. UK cat in particular. And when you've also got like A-levels and stuff to worry about, it's just not the one. I did the exam, then I did the interview, then I got accepted to University of Leeds. And then I also got accepted to two medical schools in Turkey. So there was, after that, there was a choice for me to make. And I picked University of Leeds. <laughs> When people think about life at medical school, the first thing that comes to the mind, and usually for good reason, is the amount of work that you have to do once you're in. The amount of work you have to do to get in is a lot, and the amount of work that you have to do once you're in is also a lot, if not double, triple, quadruple, quintuple, a lot more. So let's see how these four medical students describe the academic side of their life at medical school and see how they overcome the challenges it places. Do some academic questions now. Sure. So you're in first year. This is this is your first time you've been exposed to studying in medicine. What's studying in med school like for you? It's very different to like what um, what we're used to in like high school because a lot of it is um, a lot more of it now is self-directed. You have to have the interest to turn up to lectures, to attend the group sessions, and um, ask questions whenever you're not sure of something. So it's a lot more independent in that sense. It's, it's, it's a total self-directed learning stuff, isn't it? It's just you teach yourself and then you do the exam and then you pass, hopefully. Uh, that's about it. Uh, it's just if you enjoy the subject, that is good, good for you. <laughs> You'll pass. If you don't, there's no way you're getting, yeah, getting passed. I think it kind of, it, it can be quite tough if you've previously been to a school where you were quite spoon-fed. It can be quite difficult to sort of adjust to being a lot more of an independent learner. But if you've been to a secondary school where like the pressure is on you to be the one who learns, then I think it's a lot easier for that sort of person. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a lot more independent. Um, I'd say if you can do A-level, you can do medical school, but it's just the volume of content that's different. I also quite like how um, it encourages more wider reading, which is not something that I used to do in high school. So that's, that's another key difference between studying in med school versus studying in um, high school and prior to that. Honestly, in first year, I mean, speaking to the other years, it, it doesn't seem as bad as what they, they, they are facing at the moment. I think like, I was comparing my, in year one, I remember comparing my A-level notes to my year one notes. I think in the first term, we basically did the equivalent of what we'd done in year 12. So it was that, it was that kind of level of content. Long, relentless. No, it's good, it's really interesting. Um, 
I think medicine in itself is a very interesting subject. Um, even if you learn about things like teratomas or like prion diseases, that stuff is pretty cool. Um, but I think it's more, it's not difficult because the actual, like the content itself isn't, isn't hard to understand. Like I'd definitely say something like physics is far more conceptually difficult, but there's just so much. You just have to know everything about everything. And I think that's mo the most difficult part is the volume that you have to learn it all in. But there are definitely periods of ups and downs and you learn how to adapt to that. Like you learn how to get better at managing your time, organizing the workload and prioritizing things. What's the workload like in med school? It's a lot. There is a lot to do. Loads. It's loads. You know, it depends how much you care. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> this is all for fun purposes. Do not take it seriously. <laughs> It's more like revising, like in year three, which is the most recent year I did, I wouldn't say the workload's that bad, but then you get to exams and I think because we didn't have any mocks for things, like that was the difficult part. Um, it felt like you're just going in blind. But um, yeah, I think the workload was a lot. Some days for my GP placement, I'd leave the house before seven, get back at 7.30 and then just revise till midnight, which isn't sustainable. I know, it was, no, it was terrible, not sustainable. Um, but I do think medicine, it's helped by the fact that we do have question banks like QuesMed, Pass Medicine. They make your life a lot easier. Obviously, I was online for year one and two, so I think it was a bit easier for me because I didn't actually have to come into uni. But having nine to five lectures can be quite tough. And then when you progress into like the clinical years, being on placement practically 40 hours a week plus having to revise on the side and then do OSCE prep on the side, it is quite a lot. It's, it is basically like having a full time job that you study for on the side and then if you've got like a job on the side it can be quite tough. Uh. <laughs> yeah, if you if you um if you wanna get good scores, if you wanna pass with A's, B's, um you need to study really hard. You need to have a daily um routine. That brings me to my next question. Yeah. How do you manage your workload? Though at first I found all these tasks quite overwhelming because in first year it's just a lot of content and you, you learn a variety of things and there are a variety of tasks that you have to engage with. So um, it was very overwhelming but the way that I overcame this is by having the mentality of um, trying to get things done as soon as I can rather than putting it off and also trying to prioritize things based on what was most important and most urgent. The first sort of half term of like the start of every year is just me like really struggling to get into the swing of things. And then as the year goes on, I get more into it. But I think it's a lot of really having to plan your time. I think it took me a while to settle into it, into it because especially our year was affected by COVID. Um, so like my first and second year was very different and I don't think I managed that well at all. Now I think I manage it better, but I think I do so much on the side that um, that's where I struggle with it. Like if I did no extracurriculars, I don't think I'd find medicine particularly challenging, but it's because, and I think a lot of medics are like this because we're expected to do a lot for our personal statement again, that I like to put, I, I like to do lots of different things. And I think that's balancing that my extracurriculars and medicine, that's a difficult thing. Well, the thing is, because we don't have lectures, we barely have assessments, so, the only workload is the end of year exam. And then you need to keep yourself motivated throughout the year to study for that exam. That's the only workload I'm th I can think of now. And f for that, what I do is, um, I do like uh, regular questions like from past med, quiz med, and um, just Googling what I don't know, what I'm curious about, or something that I see in placements. I just Google on the same day. I'll, like, I'll do a research about it the same day and teach myself that. And then I think that's basically how I manage. <laughs> Do you find it difficult? Um, yeah, it can be tricky sometimes because if you don't know what you're doing and, or what you need to do, then you, kind, you sometimes feel lost. What's placement like? Uh, I really enjoy it. Um, I think there's a lot of there's a lot of really cool stuff to see. Really great to try out your clinical experience. It can be really, really boring sometimes if you're just on the wards. It's like a zoo. <laughs> So recently we've moved on to secondary care. Initially I was at primary care placement, so uh, I quite enjoyed that actually, because it was quite nice. I, I, got to, I got the chance to see like uh, how, what I was learning in the lectures applied directly in the clinic. You feel like those like five-year-olds five in the zoo that like just walk around, run around, point towards like what animals they see, be like, oh mom, look, there's a lion here. 
that's that's you when you find the clinical skills to sign off to get signed off, um, or when there's interesting thing going on in the wards. But if you get a good junior doctor, or you're really good at like pushing to get stuff you want to get done done, it'd be re it is basically what you make of it in a lot of ways. But I I personally enjoy it. I know some people don't. I actually love placement. Placement was my favorite part. Like I I, I lectures are cool and stuff, and I'm sad I missed them out sort of in-person lectures because of COVID. But I really enjoy placement. I think there's some days where you get to see some really, really cool like surgeries or whatever. You get to chat to patients and like most of the time patients are absolutely lovely. It was a good learning opportunity for um, uh, for me because I because uh, our placements were structured into like um, clinic time with the clinicians and that included like GPs, healthcare assistants, nurses and pharmacists even but it also included teaching time where we got to learn about like the common drugs that were prescribed and I found this combination quite useful. But th there are some days where you're just sort of standing around which is a bit annoying but most of the time it's the staff you meet as well, the junior doctors are absolutely lovely, um, the nurses as well, so helpful. You feel really unexperienced <laughs> and really young um, among all those professionals. Um, but it is really, it's a really nice feeling um, if there's someone to give you a hand and um, talk you through what's actually happening. And then you feel you belong there. Uh, that sense of belonging is really important to feel comfortable and happy um, doing placement. It's really nice to meet those types of people and have sort of heart-to-heart -heart chats with patients as well and improve your clinical skills. And I think, um, especially after doing sort of lectures so much, Placement is like a breath of fresh air because you get there and you're like, yeah, this is, this is what I want to do for sure. And it is quite an interesting experience, quite um, unique. Then not all students get that. Medicine students, medical students get that. And yeah, it is fun. It is fun, definitely. What's like the teaching and learning like? So like lectures, tutorials, seminars, what's that like? Um, I like the lectures, but I remember them being very full on because you go from A-levels and you're like, surely it doesn't get harder than this. And then you just go to medicine. And I think our first lecture was like 120 slides or something. Um, and it, yeah, it was crazy. Like the volume is massive. It's quite um, independent. Like um, you, uh, they give you all the information that uh, you're expected to know for exams. They may give you some extra bits as well, but it's down to you to be able to, uh, to go over that material in your own time to make sure you understand it and then um, prioritize the stuff that is likely to show up in exams and stuff that you just need to know for your general clinical knowledge. Lectures? <laughs> we don't have lectures. Um, so in year three at the moment it's uh, very much placement based so you're on place I'm on placement you're on placement three to five days a week depending on what rotation you're on. You do have lectures. Um, not on medical subjects, but in ethics and communication skills, yes. Um, but thankfully, we have teachings at hospitals. Um, they're really helpful. Um, they talk us through some of the core conditions that we're responsible for, um, some of the clinical skills, um, history and examinations. Some hospitals have really, really good teaching. So like in Leeds, I really, Jimmy's is great, Airedale is great. Um, uh, those other ones have really had good teaching. For, Bradford's pretty decent as well. Um, that's really helpful and it's nice to learn that like in in the same site like in the in hospitals where you can go towards in the afternoon and practice those skills. Most lectures are really good. I mean, I'm, a, I'm biased towards anatomy. I'm biased towards anatomy because um, that's what I'm studying this year, but I think the anatomy lectures are absolutely incredible. Um, tutorials are great as well. In particular, when you're on, when they have like a GP or something come in, um, Naka, I don't know if you remember, but you remember in year three when we did comms training uh, or something yeah. like that. And we had like the GPs come in um, and we had tutorials with them. Like that was so helpful. When you're on GP rotation, you have uh, Thursdays in uni, which is actually quite good because we, we've got a lot of like, um, we have the patient care community here, um, which is really useful to like, actually get experience with real patients in kind of like a more simulated environment that's quite good but um, otherwise in year three it's a lot of independent learning so we get given a list of core conditions and basically have to teach ourselves that um, so yeah they're good there's just loads of lectures um, <laughs> so many <laughs> any particular placement highlights 
Compared to secondary care, I must say I am enjoying primary care a bit more, though that might be because um, I'm only a first year med student, so we don't, <laughs> we don't receive as much attention in secondary care for obvious reasons, since there'll be emergencies and all that. I think it's the scrubs. It's the, when you wear your scrubs, you feel so professional, like you know your stuff. Actually, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but you look like you do. Um, it's the power of that blue. This isn't a funny one. This is like a weird, it was funny at the time, but like weird looking back on it. Um, I'm, I think we were on like a cardiology ward and I was taking this history or something or examining this patient. And we were in like a, there was like a couple of us maybe like doing it together. And this man was like, ooh, do you mind if I, could you just massage my feet? Oh my God. <laughs> and so my friend, or I think it was my he did it. She was like doing it for a while. She felt really uncomfortable. And I was like, I got this. I'll take over. And then, like, obviously, a few days later, I was like, hmm, hmm. <laughs> that didn't seem right. <laughs> yeah. Um, that was quite funny. Uh, there were some really great stories. Like, I, I live with two other medics, so we come back and we tell stories at the end of our day. And it'll be something like one of my classmates would say, Oh, I just, I was really boring. I was just making tea all day. And the other will be like, Oh, well, I came back and I got, bit, I, I got bitten by an old lady. And the only reason why I could stop her was like, singing ABBA at her, so it's it's quite diverse. Yeah, el el elderly versus GP is certainly a difference. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even... <laughs> I... Sorry, I can't even fathom the direction that just went in. <laughs> Neither could I, we were just stood in our kitchen like, what the f*** are you on about? So I'm in breast and endocrine surgery placement at the moment. And so during clinics, you need to do breast examinations, thyroid examinations. And you know that thing with medical students, uh, when you need to palpate lymph nodes, they all go like... Yeah, yeah. And yeah. the surgeon was it looked like he, she really had enough of those. And she was like, stop the piano playing fingers, like just do circular motion, circular, circular. Um, so that was like a, a breaking point for me because I used to do that as well, uh, all the time, uh, doing oski as well. But then I felt like I needed to change something. You know, when you go like that, but like you're not actually feeling for anything, but you look like you're feeling for something. Um, so you actually need to, get in there and like do circular motion and just feel for your lymph nodes. <laughs> okay, I'll stop there. <laughs> now that we've had a look at the academic side of medicine, we can see that generally it's pretty tough. There's lots of lectures, lots of hours, lots of time on placement, lots of traveling, and generally a lot of studying. So it's pretty full on. So let's shift gears and focus on the social side of your life at medical school, because that is an equally important part because you need a balance of both your academics and your socials to have a fruitful time at medical school. But as you've heard, it's tough. So let's see how our four medical students manage their social side at medical school with one first very important question. What are the extracurriculars and societies like in med school? They're great because there's uni-wide ones that you can do, but there's also me medicine-specific ones. Um, really good, really diverse. It, I think there is something for everyone if you want to get involved. I mean, because there's everything from religious societies, academic societies, music and art societies, specifically for med students, and then there's nothing stopping you from getting involved with the rest of the uni. I think it depends on the university, but I think we're really lucky. There are lots of societies that you know of Leeds. Lots of cultural, academic, sports, Musical. Honestly, they're quite varied and this was something that I really liked about um, Leeds Medical School in particular. We have so many different societies that are medic based. Um, there are some for sports like the Leeds Badminton, uh, uh, the Leeds Medics and Dentists Badminton Club. There's also um, one for hockey, I think. Um, and I think one that, one, one that everyone signs up for is the Mums Scheme. Um, I think it's like the Medics Undergraduate Mentoring Scheme. That's right. I wouldn't know if it, I don't know yeah, if that's like an accurate. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's when you get like a medic family and I'm still in contact with my mums um, and my sister, which is quite sweet. I'm the president of Turkish society this year, it's cultural society. Um, but also last year I was part of Leeds um, Lamps, Leeds Amateur Musical, Medics Musical Society. 
um, and we did Lightning Teeth, it was quite fun. And that's, yeah, and I went to the Leeds Medics Choir concert and that was adorable. I really want to sign up to that now. So music societies like the ultrasounds and arithmics, which um, are all very cool. I wish I was just as musically talented as them. <laughs> and then there are also a few academic um, um, me uh, medical societies like CardioSoc, Brain Leads, which I'm part of the committee, and also um, some other social ones like MedSoc. I'm part of Leeds. Um, tennis society. Um, I'm also going to bas Leeds Medics basketball, basketball practices. And I quite enjoy being part of multiple um, societies, all doing different things. And it's a really good um, distraction from all the stress of studying medicine or uh, placements. And there's also ones that can just help you anyway. So if you want to like community first responders, for example, and that'll be great in sort of improving patient rapport and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, it's great. And actually, I think societies are the best way to make friends at uni. Having this variety of um, medical societies is a great way of meeting. Is a great way of meeting all the people on your course because there are like 300 odd students in our course, and it's very it's it, it's very difficult to meet all of them like during course time. So this is a nice opportunity to meet them as well as um, seniors. Ah, oh, that brings me on nicely to my next question. <laughs> is it easy to make friends in med school? Um, yeah, I'd say so. Like I th I think. It, well, if you were to make friends within medicine, it's probably easy to do in the first couple of years when you've got lectures. I think it's harder than in comparison to secondary school, because obviously when you're in secondary school, you're with the same people every day, you see them every day, it's a lot easier to maintain those friendships, whereas when you get to uni, it can be a bit harder. Sort of yes, sort of no. I mean, uh, yes, like, in the most part, yes, I think it's, it's quite easy to uh, make friends in med school, because, like, you all have the same interests, you have uh, the same interests in anatomy and physiology, in biology and chemistry so it's quite so you you're bound to find people that uh, will have the same interests as you both in and out of medicine and with all of these societies available um, to join you will definitely find someone that um, shares your interests so in that front I think it is quite easy to make friends but then as I said there are, there are quite a lot of people so it, it takes time to establish good relationships with people I think like there are <clears throat> if you're in this if you're in a flat with someone in first year that's quite a good way to make friends but you have to you do have to put a more active role into making friends if you're more introverted it might take longer but more extroverted people i think it's relatively easy to do now like in year three in placement unless i was on placement with somebody i wouldn't really meet anyone else everyone's so stressed everyone is everyone has their own thing going on so it's really hard to sometimes like approach people especially before you met them. If it's going to be the first time you're going to talk to them, it's, I think it's really tricky. Um, that's what I saw, at least. I think it's very easy to make friends in first year and second year, especially with like the med sock events and things like that. Um, but for me personally, I've probably made most of my friends in um, sort of other uni societies. They're really nice people. They're just tired and uh, burnt down, probably. And I think that's uh, something I would tell like other uh, students that um, are planning to come to Leeds that, um, and are international, uh, that they shouldn't rush this process and they should try and engage with as many societies as they can so they get to meet people and so that they can establish um, relationships, friendships with people that um, they enjoy being around. Again, societies and socials are a good way of <clears throat> making new friends um, and spending time with your friends, yeah. What's the difference like between years one and two and then clinical years? I think, I think you get to meet a lot more people because I've met people in third year I've literally never spoken to before. So I think it's, it's, you get a chance to meet a wider section of people. It can be a lot harder to socialise in third year because I, I know people have like, they've had to take a step down from the societies they do because like doing placement nine to five and then going off to do something else can be quite tiring. So I think, yeah, I think it is, but you, I think it's, it's, it's definitely a change because you'll meet more people but you'll also might have to take a step back on some things. Is it easy to have a varied life? For sure, yeah. In some ways, yes, in other ways, definitely not. It is not easy. I think one of the things I was worried about when I joined med school was that I wouldn't be able to do as much because I've always done like basically everything, <laughs> like martial arts or choir or whatever. Like I was always doing quite a lot. I think in terms of like the actual medical stuff you do, it's very easy to do varied things because like if you're on placement, you can see one thing, get to go into the wards. If you like put your effort into it, you can get involved with audits, whatever you want to do. 
but in terms of like maybe the extracurricular stuff I think it's a lot harder I think it is a lot quite easy just to like feel like you need to be in a room studying medicine all day for example in a regular week you come back home from placement you're really tired you need to cook for yourself and then you need to clean the dishes and you're just so tired you can barely stand up stand up anymore you've been standing up for hours in hospitals um, but then you need to socialize because you're bored as well you need to, you need to make time for yourself you need to enjoy yourself i like to keep busy because um, i also think that helps me stay organized um, but i was worried about that when i joined that i wouldn't be able to do everything and i think it is more difficult to do stuff than it is for maybe people on other courses but you can absolutely still do um, basically everything you want. Most of the time on social media like people people tend to have this image of medical students always like constantly studying and like not having time for socials not having time to meet friends have a good time out or like pursue other extracurriculars but I think you you, you can do, definitely do that especially here in Leeds with such an active student community so yeah, I think it is uh, quite uh, doable to have a varied life. It just depends on how you organize your time and how you prioritize your tasks. If you're so, if you're a, a part of society, if you might have practices, rehearsals, then you need to like pull yourself together and go to that rehearsal, that practice with that last remaining energy. But then it's actually recharging, you know, you, you recharge yourself. So it's really important to collect that like that bare minimum energy and just bring yourself there but I think it is it is doable it's just it's just hard to do so it is difficult but it is possible and I think it's crucial now when planning this video I thought that the two fundamental sides of your life at medical school is your academics and your socials and now that we've addressed both of these sides I wanted to take a deeper look and give you a bit of an insight into what the actual day-to-day -day life of a medical student is like as well as the challenges that poses right okay so thing is, it's different depending on what year of medicine you're in, you know, <clears throat> because years one and two is basically your lectures. This is quite a tricky question because honestly, our timetables fluctuate so much. Sometimes there are days where we have um, only one tutorial, like in the afternoon at 12, and then we're free for the rest of the day. Those days are always nice. They're usually on Fridays, so that's something to look forward to. And then some days some days are like very challenging mentally and physically because uh, one of my one of my timetable days we've got placement anatomy and lectures so that can be very tiring and yeah honestly it's quite difficult to describe an average day whereas year three was all placement practically um but with placement i would wake up early early in the morning i'll set my alarm for somewhere between 6 30 and 7 30 depending on where i am for placement i'll probably wake up at 6 50 or 7. get up travel or from an accommodation just get up you'd get, get dressed and have breakfast i'd make myself breakfast and stuff and then i'd get on the train so i'd walk to the train station and then go to train station walk to train station or wait for your friend or go to your friend's house for a lift take two or three trains, um, then walk to the hospital, um, and then you get changed into your scrubs, and um, you're on the wards for a bit. Um, do a day, so it could be something like, uh, for example, I'm at Airedale at the moment, so what I'll do is I'll have um, a morning of clinical skills teaching, so it'll be, for example, we do um, <clears throat> ophthalmology teaching, ABGs, catheterization, anything like that in the clinical skills lab. And on the wards, I'll be doing things like, um, I think I did quite a lot of sort of taking bloods and, and putting in cannulas and stuff and also just trying to get things ticked off. Have lunch and then in the afternoon we usually be on the wards, so that's stuff like go on ward rounds, do bloods on actual patients, take histories, do um, assessments which we call mini checks, which are like basically assess clinical skills. You might have teaching in the morning or a ward round and then lunchtime is quite nice. You get along, like you get together with your friends who are in different departments. You talk about all the weird stuff you've seen in the morning or like um, any rude people you've seen. Sometimes the doctors are really nice and they buy you coffee or whatever. Um, and then in the afternoon, you'd probably have a tutorial. And those tutorials were amazing. Those were done by junior doctors. I thought they were so helpful. Um, and in the afternoon, um, you're just waiting uh, for the opportunity to ask the consultant to leave <laughs> or the junior doctor to sign you off. Um, you spend most afternoons like that. And then I'd get the train back. 
um, rinse around like four latest I'd say um, you back go, go back home um, make dinner after that I will give myself half an hour's break and then I'll get some manky done some past med and relax for a bit make myself some dinner and have a shower and then um, revise for like way too long and then um, have dinner try and chill for a bit then do a little bit more work and as I mentioned if you have a, if you have a society event you go to that and then you come back home and sleep. But before that society event and dinner, you might need to study. <laughs> yeah, it's good if you study there. <laughs> then go to bed. I think in year three, my sleep schedule was totally thrown off. Like I did not get enough sleep at all. Basically, more, most of the time our lectures start at nine. So that is a small disadvantage, but then you are studying medicine. So that is something to look forward to. And other than that, you would you typically have lectures like in the afternoon, I think in first year and then like, some groups, group work, anatomy, or placement in between. What are the hardest aspects of being at medical school? Ooh, um, lack of sleep, I think is a big one for me. You need to manage your time quite well. You need to be, you need to have discipline. It would be like maintaining a balance between all the different aspects of your life. Okay, I think there's multiple. One, FOMO, because I do society with people in Yorkshire who like don't study medicine. And I think seeing them get to do so much of the stuff that happens throughout the week and I can't do that. I literally can't because I've got like tutorials and lectures that I have to go to. I'm ideal, like, my ideal amount of sleep is nine hours a night, which is just not plausible. Like, uh, cause I was, this week I've been in a show and doing um, placement in Airedale. So I had to, I would get, I, I, I would get back off the rehearsals from like, at like midnight and then I have to be up at 6.30. So I think you, it's quite, if you do stuff around medical school, it's quite easy to lose a lot of sleep. And you need to motivate yourself to study and uh, to get on top of your to-do lists. Like making sure that you're spending enough time um, covering the things that you're meant to know for the exams, making sure you have enough time to yourself just to pursue your own hobbies and interests, but then also making time for social events and for like remaining in touch with your family. And I think that's especially important as like being an international student, being away from home. But you need to also make time for your family and friends. You shouldn't forget them um, along the way. Um, and most importantly, you need to make time for yourself. So it's a really time management um, issue, I think. I also think you know, it's a difficult time with the NHS at the moment. So going into med school, which is quite kind of all encompassing and it's sort of all or nothing type thing. Um, now that I'm here, you have to sort of stick it out. And I do love it. Um, I really do and I'm excited to be a doctor, but with the state of the NHS at the moment, it's quite scary, I'd say. Um, other difficult things are the workload. I mean, it's a lot of juggling things. Um, I've heard a lot of people talk about how difficult it is to maintain a relationship. I think like, so if, you're, if you've got a partner or something like that, it's quite hard to, it's doable again, but it's quite hard to prioritise them. It's that sort of thing, I think. So I think that is definitely um, a challenge that most med students would face, especially internationals, in trying to maintain this balance, in trying to like um, maintain this balance, but also trying to find a sense of belonging like within the med school community. And again, what I would say to that is probably um, learn to prioritize your tasks and um, try and try and engage with everything you can with all the opportunities that are available to you. What advice would you give to your younger self about med school? Girl, you're gonna see some disgusting stuff. <laughs> Get ready for that. Um, it's not all neat, clean and beautiful as it sounds. I should learn to be more um, proactive and I, I, should be, I shouldn't be too afraid to take on opportunities because I think the reason why I'm enjoying my first year so much is because I've tried, um, I've tried every, all the different societies. I've like been to like so many different events and because of that, it's enabled me to like um, meet some great people all, from all different walks of life and from all sorts of different backgrounds. And I think that's definitely made my time in med school a lot more enjoyable. To be honest, I'd probably start later. I won't lie, like I, as Adam Kay said, who's the guy who wrote um, This Is Going To Hurt, um, he said the one thing that the American sort of healthcare system get right is that they choose their doctors a bit later. And I sort of agree with that, because I think when you're at medicine, you're maturing anyway and getting older and you sort of see different careers and you're like, oh, maybe that could have been right for me. You're not going to do as well as you did in secondary school and that's okay. Like you're not going to be getting 80% anymore and that's completely fine. You don't need to be top of the year. You're dealing with human body. So there's, uh, and you're dealing with everything about human body. It can be anything that comes out, comes in, you know. Um, medicine's one of those things that I do think you can come back to it. Like our year had um, a massive variety of age ranges. 
So it's definitely something you can go to in later life if you wanted. Just be aware of those. But like medicine, you're helping people. It's a really, it's a really nice job. And you're just helping people for life and you're getting paid for it. You know, that's what I always thought. So like, but yeah, no, I, I'm happy with, I don't know if I give much advice. I'm happy with how I'd done it. I'd say just join the societies you want um, and make sure you have it's not all work, you know, you've got to have a good social life. And I think actually the extracurriculars are really good at building up like soft skills or socialising or whatever, which is also really important. Enjoy it where you can, like you are going to see some really cool stuff. Also, you're in a really lucky position um, to think. So if you ever feel like you're losing that sense of motivation, think about how privileged you are to be where you are. One of the biggest factors that affects your life at medical school is obviously which medical school you go to. I'm standing outside the Great Hall at the University of Leeds because if you haven't gathered already, all of the medical students in this video, including myself, are Leeds medical students. So let's ask the question, why did they choose Leeds Medical School? Here's a big important question. Let's go. <laughs> why Leeds? Okay, so, right, multiple reasons. On paper, um, integrated course, I think that would just suit my learning style more. I didn't know if I'd like case or problem-based learning. Um, I thought integrated was the one for me. And also my cousin went here and he really enjoyed it. So not that that's why you should join. But um, I, I think I saw that and I, it made me look at Leeds positively. So the reason why I chose, um, I chose to apply to Leeds Medical, Medical School as one of my four options on the UCAS form is mainly because of the way that they structure their curriculum. Like the fact that they have an integrated um, curriculum um, with placements and all that means that we get early clinical exposure, like from the very like onset in year one itself. I wanted to get clinical skills teaching, uh, sorry, placement quite early on. And the other ones I applied to did do that, but not in the same way Leeds did. Um, I wanted actual experience with uh, dissection and prosection. Whereas I know some unis, they don't allow you to like go to hospital and attend placement like until you're in year two or three. So that was definitely one benefit for me. Another benefit was the case-based learning that um, is quite prominent here in their medical school curriculum. And that's especially something useful for me because I realized quite early on that I'm the sort of person that um, learns best when I know when it's being applied. Like, I, I learn better when I know um, where, it's, where it is being used, where, the, where these clinical facts are being used. So that was another reason I, why I applied to Leeds. Also, it's campus-based, um, but it's still in the city. And I think that's something that's quite unique about Leeds, actually. I really like that. Also, I live in Surrey, so I, I went to school in basically in London and I didn't want to go there because I saw, I saw uni as an opportunity to sort of branch out um, and also London's really expensive, so <laughs> um, I sort of wanted to move away. But I looked around some other unis and I just didn't like, I didn't like them. I don't know why I didn't, I just didn't like the vibe. And then I went to Leeds and I was like, yeah, I see myself here. The other reason why I applied to Leeds was mainly because of the student community too. So on the social side, I, um, I saw online that uh, Leeds has quite an active student community and has so many different societies. Um, and that was about it really. Yeah, I just saw myself there. I liked the vibe. I thought it was, I heard that it wasn't very competitive as in like people weren't competitive within your year. Um, it was more sort of um, friendly and I liked that. Um, and I also saw Leeds as sort of an epicentre for medicine. So likewise, how London is sort of where everything goes on down south. It seems like Leeds is like a big place for medicine up north. So, yeah. And um, honestly, at first, when I was first uh, coming to the UK, I was most worried about not being able to find people from the same background as me or similar background as me uh, where we could relate. But I was honestly shocked when I came here to um, Leeds because I found so many people from um, the same part of India as me. Yeah, it's quite surprising how I've developed uh, more of my Hindi speaking skills here than back home in Malaysia. That's impressive. <laughs> mm. the, the uni is a very multicultural community and I feel that that's one of its strengths. As I said, I only got offer from Leeds from the UK. Where else did you apply? Oh, okay. So I applied to Oxford, Manchester, um, Sussex and Brighton and Leeds. But to be honest though, I did just want to get into a medical school um, and Leeds just seemed like a good one and I knew the area and I liked the area, so 
We now have a general overview of what life in medical school is really like. So let's delve a bit deeper and ask some more specific questions about these particular medical students and their experiences at medical school so far. What was it like to come as an international student? It was quite wild, can't lie. Um, it was right after the pandemic as well. Um, so I came to UK during my second year because I spent my first year in Turkey. And um, I came a bit late in second year as well because I was waiting for Turkey to come off of uh, the red list countries because um, you need to quarantine for 10 days in your room um, when you arrive in UK if you're coming from a red list country. Um, that's why I came in a bit late, so it was tricky for me to get to know people. Um, all the friendship groups were al already made. It's, it definitely presents its own set of challenges and at times that can be like difficult to cope with because you won't always find the people that will like share those same experiences with you. But um, I think overall it's been quite an interesting experience for me because I've gotten to ex uh, explore and engage with um, many different things and many different opportunities. Yeah, but it's been it's been good after that. Uh, once once I got set, settled in, um, people were really nice. They're all welcoming. That's that, that's really good. That was really helpful. And I like talking about. Uh, I don't know, um, interesting facts about uh, my country or the countries I've been to. Um, and I like it when people are interested. What's intercalating like? Ah, um, intercalating is great. Um, obviously, it's one of those things where um, it's like another year where you have to be financially supported and stuff like that. So um, I'm lucky that I'm able to do it. But I absolutely love it. I intercalated after my third year of medicine. And um, not only is it I wouldn't even say it's much of a break because I think, because <laughs> I'm doing clinical anatomy, um, only a, a BSc, but the content's quite difficult, I think. I've absolutely loved my intercalated year. It means I get to hang out a bit more with some of my friends and do more with sort of the societies that I do as well. Um, but it's helped me so much. Like neuroanatomy, woo, went over my head. <laughs> now I understand it a bit better in terms of dissecting like our course in medicine. I think it changed the year I joined or the year before I joined leads to be sort of like prosection rather than dissection, which just means you're sort of looking at things that have already been dissected rather than you're dissecting yourself. So we never got a chance to do that sort of stuff. And equally with um, everything going online, I wouldn't say my anatomy knowledge was very good. So I chose that and actually it's been brilliant. You know, I've done extensive dissection now. Um, I've got a, a project that I'm really interested in. I like it because it's given me a bit of a break and it's also given me time to reflect on how year three went and how I'm going to prepare myself for year four. But I've absolutely loved intercalating. Like in terms of the hours, it's much more relaxed than medicine. So I've been able to, yeah, do more with societies and also just the knowledge itself um, has been so helpful. It's sort of cemented stuff in my mind that I probably should have known a bit better in, <laughs> in year three, yeah. What's third year like compared to first year? Um, a lot more independent because you have basically a list of clinical skills that you are expected to basically teach yourself essentially. So it's a lot more on you to learn the content um, and be responsible for your learning. It's quite good in a lot of ways because you can, if there's something that interests you, you can go down that route. If it's not something that interests you, you can just learn the bare bones and hope that gets you through the exam. Um, I think placement, getting to do a lot more placement is really good. Like the, I've improved a whole lot compared to like comparing my clinical skills to September to now, it's really a massive change. Now, if you've made it this far into the video, there is a high chance that you are someone who is interested about going to medical school or someone who has already applied. So I'm going to ask my interviewees one final question. What piece of advice would they give to future medical applicants? I think there are a lot of things you need to consider when going into medical school. I don't think it's a simple yes or no. So I would tell them that uh, to follow where their interests take them. If they're interested in anatomy, in physiology, in like the biochemistry of uh, the human body, if they're interested in all those things and if they're interested in helping people, then I would say medicine is definitely the career path for them. I think it's really important to have a work experience if they're interested in medicine. The way to like know whether or not the medicine is for them is like getting experience. I feel like getting a good amount of work experience at um, the cancer hospital that I went to back in Malaysia definitely helped me decide that uh, medicine is for me. To see what it's like to be working in a hospital, dealing with uh, patients, um, real patients, and um, seeing all that uh, teamwork, all that multidisciplinary um, teams and 
people from different um, backgrounds and specialties and everything. So I would recommend everyone to make sure you have enough um, experience in like being in a hospital, like shadowing a, a consultant and just seeing how the field is like before committing to medicine. If it's what your heart wants, but I think also, um, I always wanted to be um, a doctor. It wasn't something that I just thought, oh, that sounds nice. Like I did think about it. Think about your reasons for doing it. Cause if it's like, oh, my dad's a doctor, so I should be it. Don't do it. Don't do it for that. Like, Cause I know people who've done that and they hate their life and they shouldn't be in medical school. You know, I, I was a high achiever in school and you get to med school and genuinely like it's, I've worked so hard, like harder than I ever have for some of my exams and just got like very mid, <laughs> very mid, if not like borderline fail <laughs> for like fail grades. And I think, you know, in school, you actually are able to do well as well as do loads of extracurriculars and it's a bit, it's a bit more difficult in, in, in med school. I think it's important to be sure and be dedicated that you want to do that. Um, <clears throat> that you wouldn't mind being in hospital rather than spending time with your family back at home, for example, because um, medicine is a really busy job and it takes it takes a lot from you as well. Seriously thinking about the finances because there are a lot of hidden costs in medical school that people just don't talk about. And like, for example, like the NHS bursary in fifth year, I know people who are being massively caught out by that. So doing research into NHS bursary, also the funding of like interclation stuff, if you consider that, just really look into financing. But I do think like, it's a really, I really enjoy it. Um, I think if you can do A-level biology and chemistry, you can do medical school. If you, uh, but you also think about how good you are as an independent learner. People who do medicine don't mind that at all, because they're just there to, because they want to be there and because they want to help people. Um, once that, that anyone explores that about themselves, um, get, gets to know their heart, hearts basically. Um, if they want to do medicine, they, they, there won't be anything in the way to do it and they just should do it. Thank you very much to the four medical students who sacrificed and volunteered their time on a weekend to come help me create this video. I hope you, the viewer, found this helpful, giving you a bit of an insight into what life in medical school can be like. If you have any questions about life here at Leeds Medical School or at medical schools across the UK, feel free to leave a comment down below or send me a message on my Instagram. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.